Hey there folks, Scottsdale Travel Chick Sidekick here to present our travel guide on the best things to see and do in and around Tucson, Arizona. In this video, we'll cover all the top sites in Tucson, along with some dining and nightlife suggestions, and then we'll top it all off with the best day trip ideas around the area. Okay, let's go. First up, let's start with a little bit of background on Tucson. Tucson's history is surprisingly ancient, with evidence of human occupation as far back as 8000 BC, when early inhabitants lived along the Santa Cruz River Valley. Native people continued to live in this area for more than 9,000 years until the Hohokam people mysteriously faded away in the mid-1400s. European influence began in the late 1600s when a Spanish mission was established in 1699, but the city of Tucson itself wasn't established until a Spanish fort was built in 1775. The location of this fort and the town surrounding it eventually became the city of Tucson and a regional hub for the Mexican state of Sonora. It wasn't until 1853, a little more than 150 years ago, that Tucson actually became part of America as a result of the Gadsden Purchase. Today, Tucson is the second largest city in the state of Arizona, with just over one million people in the metro area. It sits at 2,400 feet in elevation in the heart of the Sonoran Desert. And the higher elevation makes the weather here a little less hot than Phoenix. So a trip to Tucson can still be enjoyed year round. Although the weather still gets hot and the best time to visit is still between October and May. Tucson is easy to get to as it's only about 100 miles from the Phoenix area and it has an international airport just a few miles southwest of the city. There's also an Amtrak stop here on the Sunset Limited Line running from New Orleans to LA. Now let's get to covering some of the tourist sites in and around Tucson. First up are a number of attractions related to Tucson's location in the desert southwest. The Arizona Sonoran Desert Museum is first up. And believe it or not, this place is often listed as one of the top 10 museums in the country. It's called a museum, but it's really part living museum, part botanical gardens, and part zoo, all combined into one great outdoor venue. The museum is a tribute to the Sonoran Desert's wildlife. And along more than two miles of walking paths, you'll have the chance to see javelinas, cotis, mountain lions, bobcats, coyotes, wildcats, and brown bears, all of which are native species to the southwest. And add to that an aquarium, an aviary, a theater, a restaurant, and more. Close by the Desert Museum is also Saguaro National Park which possesses the most dense forests of these iconic saguaro cactuses in North America. There's a visitor center here along with some great hiking trails which aren't too long. And pro tip, the park actually consists of two unconnected west and east areas. But I mentioned just the west section here as it's often the most popular. Here's some cool drone footage flying through some of the saguaro cactuses. Interesting point is some of the red flowers you see on these cactuses are actually edible fruit and we got to try some when we visited the visitor center. So this is the fruit from the saguaro, huh? Right. And is it a certain season that the fruit comes out? Right now. Right now. Here's the blooms. We've finished most of our blooms. You just got to bloom every now and then now and this yeah. is the fruit here yeah it's really good huh? and here's the dried up flower on the fruit yes so this is just a fruit cut in half and it looks like that mm -hmm. what does it taste like well, like real seedy yeah it's real seedy but you can eat the seeds with it yeah. finally Northeast of downtown is Sabino Canyon, which has some of the most spectacular desert scenery in the area, 
along with some water and waterfalls, and it's a great place for hiking as well. But if you're not one into hiking, you're also in luck, as there's a dedicated tram ride here which takes visitors along a seven and a half mile paved road to experience much of the scenery without getting your britches all sweaty. Pro tip here, you'll need a National Park Pass, which is $5 a day, and can be also used for nearby Mount Lemmon. Outside of all these natural attractions, there's also some man-made attractions worth exploring as well. First up, the Pima Air and Space Museum is here, and it's one of the largest non-government funded flight museums in the world, featuring more than 350 historic aircraft spread across 80 acres and six indoor exhibit hangars. A separate tour can also be booked here called the Boneyard Tour. And in that tour, you can explore over 4,000 mothballed airplanes sitting in the dry desert heat. But just a note, an application must be submitted in advance to take the Boneyard Tour. If you're into local Hispanic culture, then maybe consider exploring one of Tucson's Barrio districts. One of the best preserved is Barrio Viejo, or Barrio Historico. It's just south of the convention center, and it's best explored on foot. It has a distinctive Mexican village feel to it, with some brightly colored adobe homes mixed in among some less well cared for buildings here and there. El Tiradito Shrine, or the Castaway Shrine in English, is also in this barrio and somewhat famous as the only shrine dedicated to a sinner in North America. The story goes that in the 1880s, a young man had an affair with his mother-in-law, and when he was caught in the act, his father-in-law shot him. He stumbled outside the house and died. The shrine now marks that place, and people still burn candles and leave offerings here every day. If you want to get out and get some exercise, then consider the Loop, an extensive system of multi-purpose bike paths surrounding Tucson. There are more than 130 miles of paved multi-use trail open for biking, walking, horseback riding, and more. It might not seem too exciting, but it's pretty famous in Tucson, and it's perhaps the most popular attraction for outdoor enthusiasts. Finally, just south of town is Mission San Xavier del Bac. It's one of the oldest Spanish missions in the West, founded in 1692. And it's an impressive sight with its pure white facade against the hot desert backdrop. It's a great example of Spanish colonial architecture and it's a national historic landmark. The mission that survives today is the oldest European structure in the state of Arizona. At one time, it lay abandoned in the 1800s, but over the years, it has been restored to what it is today. In fun fact, you can still attend weekly church services here, and best of all, the entire place is free to explore. While you're there, be sure to sample some of the local food vendors out front. And finally, a pro tip, there's a unique historical cemetery just around the corner worth your time to make a quick stop. But please be respectful while you're there. Now, let's touch on the dining and nightlife options around Tucson. But before I do, just a quick shout out here that if you're enjoying this video, please give us a thumbs up and maybe a comment and consider subscribing to our channel to receive more fun, informative travel videos just like this one. It really helps. Okay, let's get back to those dining ideas. Bet you didn't know, but Tucson is a UNESCO certified city of gastronomy, notable for its 4,000 years of Mexican and Native American culinary heritage. There are lots of places to choose from, some fancy and some not so fancy, so get out and explore. But I'll mention four favorites here. El Charo is famous in Tucson and perhaps around the country as it's the place that the chimichanga was first invented. And it's the oldest Mexican restaurant in America in continuous operation by the same family since 1922. It's definitely worth a stop. Laco, not so far away, has been voted one of the best outdoor dining choices in Tucson. 
food's not so fancy, and it's an eclectic mix of Mexican and non-Mexican choices, but it's a great place to relax and enjoy a drink and a bit to eat. And a bonus, this place has nice casual live music on most nights. Another choice and the locals favorite is the award-winning Seas Kitchen. It's one of the more upscale options in town with a menu inspired by six culinary regions around Mexico. And there are currently three locations around Tucson. For a little slice of street food paradise, check out Taqueria Pico de Gallo, a family-run business that's been serving up great food in a very basic place for more than 30 years. Now let's talk some nightlife. In terms of Tucson nightlife, there are primarily two, maybe three, areas worth considering. Perhaps the most popular and well-known area is 4th Avenue. It's the largest concentration of bars, nightclubs, and live music spots in Tucson, with many long-standing favorites such as Maloney's, O'Malley's, The Shanty, Bison Witches, The Surly Wench, and more. Congress is the second nightlife area to consider. Again, there are a number of places here, but perhaps the most famous and popular is Hotel Congress with its Club Congress and outdoor live music area. Another favorite here is Cobra Arcade Bar. It's a fun mix of trendy bar along with classic arcade games to bring out your inner child. I said there are possibly three nightlife areas and the third is Main Gate Square near the University of Arizona. It's a bit more dining and shopping than nightlife, but it is a college hangout area and the U of A campus is right next door and worth a walk around to see some of the old, at least for Arizona, buildings if you're up for it. Well, we've touched on just a few things around the city of Tucson. But Tucson has so many more things to offer, just a short drive from town. So in this section, I'll cover a dozen day trip options to choose from, all grouped by their general direction from Tucson. To the southeast of Tucson, you'll have five options. Santa Rita Foothills Wineries are located about 30 minutes southeast of Tucson. Here you'll find more than a dozen wineries you can explore at your leisure and sample some of the best wines Arizona has to offer. Bet you didn't know Arizona has a wine region, huh? Karchner Cabin State Park is another 30 minutes southeast and is well known as perhaps the best living cave system in America and is considered one of the top 10 cave systems in the world. Plus, it's only been open to the public since 1999 and they limit the number of people who visit. So, be one of the few in the world to see it. Tombstone is another one hour southeast of Tucson and it's the famous Old West Boomtown where you can visit haunted buildings, graves of famous outlaws, and see the reenactment of the famous shootout at the OK Corral. Finally, another 30 minutes further still is the town of Bisbee. It also makes for a pleasant day trip and it's a long-time mining town which has reinvented itself as a tourist attraction and artist community. There's a walkable downtown to explore, as well as the very popular Copper Queen Mine Tour. To the west of Tucson, you have three options which you can do all in one day if you want to pack things tight. They are the Mission San Xavier del Bac I mentioned earlier. It's just 10 miles south of town. From there, you can take the back road loop through the desert to the Arizona Desert Museum I also mentioned earlier. And finally, just past that is the western region of the Saguaro National Park, which I also mentioned. All three of those can be done in one day trip loop. To the north of Tucson, you have three very different options to explore. You might be able to cram all three of these into one day, but that would be pretty tight, so it's best to try to break these up if you're interested. First up is Sabino Canyon, the beautiful popular canyon area with the tram tours I mentioned earlier. And from there, you can take the drive up Mount Lemon. Mount Lemon is a peak and also a small town high up in the Catalina Mountains. 
at about 9,000 feet or 2,800 meters. It offers a great day trip to see some unique high elevation Arizona scenery. And it's important to note, it's about 30 degrees cooler than Tucson proper. So there's snow in the winter and fun fact, there's actually an operating ski resort here too. Bet you didn't know that if you're not from Arizona. Finally, a unique experience in all the world is Biosphere 2. It was originally designed to prepare astronauts for living in a fully enclosed environment in space. And today, it's Earth's largest fully enclosed and sealed human-centric terrarium, covering over three acres. Finally, directly south of Tucson, you have two more options worth considering. The Titan Missile Museum is only 30 minutes outside Tucson, and it's where you can tour a real-life nuclear missile silo which used to house a Titan Minuteman ICBM. The museum was part of a larger and very desolate field of silos in the southwest that would have been a hub for nuclear war with the Soviet Union had it ever happened. Today you can tour it and see what it would have been like to live and work here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Finally, how about visiting another country from Tucson? The small city of Nogales, Mexico is a little more than one hour south of Tucson and you can drive there, park, and easily walk across the border crossing to experience some real life Mexican culture, shopping, food, and souvenirs. Be sure to bring your passport for this one though. Well, there you have it folks, our visitor guide for the best things to see and do in and around Tucson, Arizona. We hope you enjoyed. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below, and please consider following us for more informative travel videos just like this one. Until next time, see you later.